Welcome, everybody, back to Siegel Talks here at the Martin E. Siegel Theater Center. And my name is Frank Henschker, and it's week 18 of uh, our talks with theater artists from New York, uh, the US, but mostly from all around the world to get an update how this uh, moment uh, of uh, the time of Corona is experienced uh, by artists as human beings, as in their everyday life, in their days, but also what uh, consequences it has for their artistic work and also, of course, for their um, thinking and uh, how they use this time and what is going uh, through your mind. Uh, when we had Eugenio Barba on our talk, he reminded us that the time before you shoot an arrow, the time of, of uh, incubation, uh, as Susanna Kennedy said, the time, this is the important time, not when you already is launching. So uh, in case there is a time after Corona, now is the time where everybody is thinking about what we are doing, what's essential, what's not. And artists always have been on the right side of social justice, on the complex fight for freedom and liberty. And, uh, uh, and it is uh, of importance to listen to them, but to really listen to them, what they say is important. And we have to take notice that perhaps we did not listen carefully enough with all the works artists have been presenting about the state of the planet, the Weltzustand, the state of the world, as we, we call it. Um, our motto is a bit uh, Battle Brecht's uh, uh, dictum, uh, new times need new forms of theater. Definitely we are in a new time uh, on uh, planet Earth. At the moment we are inside a catastrophe movie, but we're not watching it. We are inside and nobody knows what will happen where it ends. We have uh, over Four million infections here in the United States. Uh, the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, says it's 10, 13, 15 times more. So 40 or 50 millions are infected. We have 150,000 people who died. Uh, most probably it's much, much more. And last week, it's been 1,000 deaths every day. So numbers are going up as everywhere in the world, even China. Um, is experiencing a, a serious outbreaks again. And so um, we are all very, very uh, concerned. If there is ever a time when art needs to speak, if it has something to say, perhaps it is now. And we all who read, um, look at images, films, poetry, recordings, we know um, what we are missing. And uh, theater is a form of live art of, with the community at the center. And uh, at the moment, we do not have it. So. What is changing? What has already changed? What will be changing? A big, big question. And with us today, we have a significant uh, uh, worker in the vineyard of theater performance and especially dance, uh, someone from the great country of Indonesia, Indonesia, which is a uh, um, uh, country we all should pay more attention to in Asia, um, not only because it has the largest Indonesian population, um, uh, a largest uh, Muslim population um, in the world with 17, almost 18,000 islands, five, 6,000 inhabited, but also how they are able to combine a contemporary modern, post-modern, post-traumatic work with significant traditional art. We already had Ria from the Paper Moon uh, company um, with us. And um, so uh, today um, we have uh, with us a uh, Heli Minarti, and uh, it's a great pleasure to have you uh, with us. Heli, where are you? What time is it? <laughs> I'm in uh, Yogyakarta, or we call it Jogja, shortened, and uh -huh. it's 11, uh, it's at 11 hours difference. So it's uh, 12 hours difference, so it's like 11 o'clock now. 11 o'clock. 11 p.m., yeah. Close to, close to, uh, close to uh, midnight. Close to midnight, uh, yes. Yeah, yes. <clears throat> it's about an hour uh, flight away from Jakarta. If you go in a car, if I understood right, with all the traffic, it's going to take 10, 14 hours. But these are two, two significant cities, of course, um, in Indonesia. Let me tell you a little bit about Heli. She is uh, Jakarta born, and she works as an independent uh, dance scholar and curator, and she is rethinking radical strategies to connect theory and practice. And it is important for us uh, to know what our Asian colleagues are doing, uh, how they are influencing our work, how they have been influenced by, you know, the theory that comes out of the Western world, but now they are adapting and creating um, something new. She's interested in historiographies of choreography as a discursive practice vis-a-vis -vis the electric knowledge of the human body nature connection and her ongoing curatorial project is 
Zizak Tabi Exchange, if I say that right, Wandering Contemporary Asian Performance. And she holds a PhD uh, from uh, Indonesia, actually uh, in Georgia, if I understand right, that's where you uh, got it? No, uh, no? from uh, Rohampton University in London. In London. Yeah. And, um, and uh, she is setting up right now uh, Ling, Ling Karani, e Ling Karan Choreography, yeah. The collaborative okay. research platform focused to expand the critical notions uh, Tell us a little bit uh, about the situation in the moment in Indonesia. What is happening? Did, can you hear me? The last week we, yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, so tell us a little bit about the situation in Indonesia and uh, what, what is happening. So in, yeah, in terms of the pandemic, yes. uh, in regards to the pandemic, it's been, in in the last seven days or yeah a week over a week we we we've been seeing again like increased uh, cases uh, nationwide um, I think now it's like almost hundred thousand uh, you know affected infected and um, I think our national rate that toll is is like five percent or something but I think Jogja because it's small. Uh, compared to Jakarta, Jakarta is 14 million people, uh, while in Jogja is not even half million. Like so, for Indonesian, it's it's deemed small. Maybe not not compared to Europe. Um, so it's uh, in Jogja is uh, I would say we're faring much better than than all those big cities uh, because we are small and the culture is slow. We <laughs> so we we we're attuned to. Uh, to being slow anyway. So when, uh, you know, when in March, uh, we were like, uh, we had to quarantine ourselves. I think it's compared to my friends in Jakarta because I, 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 I am Jakarta. And I mean, I spend most of my time, most of my whole life in Jakarta. It's a different, you know, it's a different take on emotionally and psychologically. So yeah. Uh, now in Jogja, we have like 500, uh, almost like, almost 587, I think, positive, but uh, with a uh, recovery rate higher than the national, national one. Because I've been watching it like every other day and the local government is kind of like open, relatively open because they, they put uh, the figures like every day at four o'clock. And then they also created this website, so I, I could I can actually check it within my neighborhood, like how many people, you know, positive or uh, what they call it. They have this several categories, like you know, like patient in observation and people in you know being observed because uh, they were like exposed to certain things, so yeah, or waiting for uh, tests. Mm. Uh, so yeah, you, I think you feel the government is doing a good job. Is it uh, uh, some sense? I think of I, national one. I think in the beginning it was like kind of like in denial. I think our ministry, minister of health, uh, he he said something uh, unwise, if not stupid. Like you know, in the beginning, it's like you know they. He, he said that, no, I think we, we will be fine, you know, like uh, in, in February. So it's, uh, it's kind of like late. I mean, we were not ready. Also like we, uh, although by February, like, you know, you could see like uh, some, some uh, yeah, big cases after Wuhan. But, um, and for, for a while, I think is uh, for weeks, I think is, uh, they try to figure out, so it's like so, so, so much confusion from their side. Uh, it's kind of like frustrating for us to really, you know, to really follow. But I think um, I would say that there is this, um, yeah, it's, it's just like the dynamic of uh, Indonesian uh, society, I think. And I think it's much, uh, it's much tense and much, uh, how do you say it? In Jakarta, uh, 
because it's it's uh, the center of politics and Jakarta is always prone to um, political feud and you know arguments and everything but I'm just lucky I think I yeah to have moved uh, to to Jogja I think it's a, it's a different space uh, for me so, yeah. Where were you when it all uh, started? Was there a severe lockdown right away? Well, uh, I, did it last? Believe you me, because I travel from de December to early March and my itinerary was crazy. So I was, first I went to Singapore for a night for a talk and then I went to Reykjavik in Iceland for a month. And that's where, that's where we heard because, you know, the news was like 31st of December and I, I, uh, you know, we all heard about it, but didn't really think that it would be like, yeah, I was uh, alarmed because I, I knew that my itinerary, uh, you know, was kind of like crazy. Then after that, uh, I had to go to the Philippines in one, one of the island to do this uh, project. And that's where uh, you start getting intense because uh, I was in Roja city, actually a small city in Visayas. Uh, region, Sayas Archipelago, in I think yeah, 40 minutes by fly, uh, 40 minutes flying from Manila. And uh, just three days uh, or one day before we opened the platform, uh, my friend said, Oh, Heli, this, uh, you know, uh, there's a three, they, they found these three Chinese, uh, they hospitalized these three Chinese person and uh, they were tested but then before the test came out I mean they released the patient and it's only like uh, you know the next city so it's only one hour drive so then when after releasing the patient they they discovered that they were actually positive so then the police you know try to find yeah try to locate them so it was a bit like then my friend the Filipino <laughs> artist was, was like stressed about it. Then I was like, okay. Then towards the, in the middle of this, uh, for me, it's, you know, it's clear that it's uh, bigger than uh, it could be, uh, yeah, uh, a big, a bigger danger for us. So I, I just read uh, what I could hold, you know, hold on. To. And then I just, you know, I just went to the pharmacy and then I bought some vitamin C because I think there's no, other things uh, that you could do, in, you know, apart from, you know, returning to your body and then, you know, paying attention to your body because, yeah, that's, that's what I did in Rojas. Because after that, I had to go to Yokohama for uh, another meeting. And that's uh, two days after I arrived in Yokohama. Uh, uh, no, I arrived two days after the, you know, this, the cruise. Do you remember the cruise uh, uh, that discovered the patient? Like, you know, yeah. and yeah. I was like, why this, this, this Corona thing following me? Like, you know, Roja City and then Yokohama. And it's so close. I mean, you know, I mean, I stayed very close to the hardware and I could listen. I could hear like, you know, the sirens of ambulance, like every now and then, uh, you know, with um, people. Uh, with medics, medical team uh, with that suit. So yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of like following me until, until I arrive in uh, my next uh, destination. And then, then my friend called me that, uh, you know, uh, the first positive cases, uh, you know, in Indonesia uh, uh, happened. And believe you me, three of, I, I knew these people because it's um, colleagues and friends, actually. Uh, it's a mother and two, two daughters. And the mother was my colleague in, in, at Indonesian Dance Festival. So yeah. it's, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's kind of like strange and weird and yeah, alarming uh, experience. Yeah, so it's a real. Uh, uh... Yeah, surreal, that's the word, yeah. So um, 
I know, I think Ria from the Paper Moon company said there was some kind of a lockdown. People were asked to, to stay at home. Did you do that too? And what, what, what were you thinking about? What was on your mind? Uh, I think I did for uh, a good full three weeks. I mean, I just, um, I just did my shopping like once a week. Normally, I, you know, I, I, did, I did my shopping like once, in, uh, once every three days or something. So that three, that three weeks between, I, I think, I think um, late of March until whole or up, you know, middle of April, um, we, uh, yeah, I, I kind of like, um, you know, stay at home. But then again, Ramadan came anyway. And in Ramadan, people slow down in a way, uh, yeah. you know, calmer. So it's, a, it's kind of like, you know, for a, for a month, uh, we, we kind of like, you know, observe either, you know, you're Muslim or not, is the, you know, at least here. And then, uh, and then I think, I think, I think exactly in Eid al Fitri, I, I kind of like, uh, you know, broke that, uh, you know, set staying at home. I remember we, I met my friends, like on the three of them, and then we, we watched film uh, at home. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah, slowly, slowly uh, try to to meet people again, but uh, in small numbers and only, yeah, the closest ones. Mm. So how's the situation at the moment for performing artists? Uh, are spaces open? Do people rehearse? So it's so funny. I think uh, during this uh, quarantine, it's kind of like everyone in dance, for example, uh, they they did a lot of like uh, video, you know, uh, screening, either home, home, uh, home production, and not, and most of them, I think, uh, took place in Instagram, and I think even the government kind of like encouraged that. I think they they commissioned uh, forty dancer, young dancers, to make to create like five minute, uh, you know, like pieces. And then they kind of like live, live stream in, in, you know, in, in YouTube. And I think for the few weeks, it was like a bit too much because everybody was doing it. And I was kind of like, um, I don't know, this illu yeah, I, find, I found it very strange. And I found I resisted to, to accept that as a, you know, because people start talking that this might be a new normal. I was like, what is normal? What is new normal is <laughs> it's not normal. I mean, we're performing arts. Uh, we should not be. To me, it's like, why we why why rushing? You know, why rushing to 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 change? Uh, because it's too soon and it's too early. You know, I think my response, uh, my personal response, was to slow down, slow down, and really take time to. Uh, so I mean, I I did a lot of like. Um, gardening or reading and you know things that I couldn't do while I was so busy with you know with work so yeah I think um, now it's kind of like calmed down uh, and uh, now we we they, they start doing uh, you know uh, festival but but online but recorded I mean just before this, I mean, I watched this uh, Wayang, you know, Shadow Puppet uh, live stream from uh, a, the university that I'm teaching because it's at the end of the semester and it's kind of like tradition for them to do some, you know, performance, live performance, and now they did this live. But then again, the technology is not up to it because you, you could see the delays. It's not like, you know, so um, yeah. I think uh, people here start embracing this as a new form, but uh, to me is uh, I I I need more time. For example, uh, you know the the jaktabi that I did. So it's uh, basically we do like the way we do is to 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 connect two cities in uh, in the region, meaning that Japan. Traveling. Japan it's South a Asia. festival, what you created, right? Yeah, but it's actually... It's not one city, it actually, the festival itself goes from city to city. Normally, companies no. go from city 
you've seen it, no? Um, uh, yeah, yeah, but we, you, it, uh, it depends. So we, we started with questions. For example, like this is the second edition. The second edition, we like to, we like to connect Roha City, it, uh, um, Visayas Island, actually. It, it, um, it, it was, uh, Rojas was not the first option. It was Negros, uh, Negros province in, 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 in the Philippines. And Naha uh, in Okinawa. So we, we like to uh, look up and close about these two cities in terms of like uh, performance practices. And uh, because there, there are some similarities uh, but not quite. For example, like both are like islands, like you know, an archipelago, archipelago thing, and both both uh, have this historical historical connection with American imperialism, like uh, Roha City and uh, and no, uh, Visayas Archipelago and Enaha. So I mean, there are some issues like political and cultural issue that seem seems to be like uh, connect them. Then we start with questions, and then we start meeting the artists and curators, and you know. And uh, in 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 Roja City, we collaborated with an arts collective called Green Papaya. It's actually visual arts uh, collective, but one of the members is dancer and choreographer, so it's you know. And then so we kind of like program with them. And then in Naha, we collaborate with uh, uh, Masashi Nomura, is a, a curator, used to be based in. Naha, but now lives in Nagano. Mm. Uh, then, so it's like in January it, it took place in Rojas, and the Naha should have should have been in uh, in uh, August, end of August, early September. And that now was canceled, is of course. that yeah, that was yeah. Tell us the and mm -hmm. so Can I, I mean, uh, go ahead. The, yeah, so it's a. Uh, uh, in the beginning, we're thinking to uh, resort to this online uh, online platform in October, but then again, we were like, "Hang on, you know." Like at that time, it's also the practicalities because of the funding. The main funder said you have to do it, like you know, at the latest by October. But when they uh, re reconsidered and then they said, "Okay, you can actually stretch it until next year." We decided to take time. So, I mean, uh, we still hope that we can do the big thing, like, you know, live as we plan some, sometimes next year. But in the, in the meantime, uh, we managed to, we're planning to launch the archive of uh, Rojas because the idea is to connect this uh, Rojas and Naha. So, I mean, we will launch the archive of Rojas maybe by December. And also the idea is, it's not only festival in terms of like uh, performing art, I mean performances, but more like the artists, the artistic practice of the artists, uh, you know, in the region. So we kind of like, also we've been following some artists uh, process, uh, making work. So for example, um, I don't know if you know Yudai Kamisato from Tokyo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, he's been following us. Uh, he's been following this platform since the first one in Jogja two, two years ago. And now uh, he did the follow up of this. Uh, he, he did some residency and research residency in Bangkok. And he kind of like shared it in Rojas, uh, his research. And then he just performed uh, uh, the next stage is, uh, is an audio play. Uh, I think two weeks ago in Theater Forman, uh, Germany, a Sea of Islands Festival. And then uh, he's thinking to develop to something, you know, with the visual, I don't know what, what, what he's working on now, but we kind of like follow him and also the other artists that, yeah. So it's more like process based than, than product based. Yeah. Yeah. I would yeah. Say. So, so tell us a bit um, about the, uh, contemporary scene in Indonesia and this emerging Asian network of theater companies, festivals, uh, platforms. Um, do you think uh, uh, something uh, new is emerging there? Something that is different from European or American initiatives? Is there a specific wow. 
Asian uh, theory and practice uh, combination we should know about? Uh, I think is uh, I think we look. I think I think we're looking for different connection to to those. Of course, you know we intimate. I think I'm, I'm, by we. I think we. It's in in theater. It's it's uh, ha happening more happening more than in dance. Because in dance, uh, we're not really, we haven't really done our home homework when it comes to theorizing it, like, you know, or um, philosophizing it, like, you know, and connecting it to the global, the global discourse. Uh, but in terms of theater, I mean, you know, uh, the connection has been always there from Arto to Brecht and to Juni Barba and, you know, and, uh, but then again, I think the present generation, they try to, to connect uh, also by looking at Indonesia beyond Jakarta, beyond Java. You know, like uh, I think, I think the other Garasi and Jonet uh, who help, uh, you know, our uh, connection, they, 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 they try to do, uh, um, address some issue like dramaturgy, for example, they have this, this uh, group now, like study group to talk about, about dramaturgy, but then again, uh, localizing it. Uh, and in terms of lo localizing it, not only focusing on Java, but also other islands. Because I think theater communities in, in, the, in Indonesia is huge, like really huge. I yeah. teach them by, I teach them by calling them congregation, like a church congregation <laughs> instead of, because they're so big, like, you know, like, and it's uh, very rooted, like, you know, communities rooted, because we don't have like professional companies, like, you know, but then again, it's, it's more like communities, but committed uh, or collectives. But then again, uh, yeah, so I think that kind of, that, uh, there is, this has been a sense of, uh, how do you say it? Uh, resorting, uh, consolidating, consolidating in terms of like uh, uh, how to connect and how to discuss, uh, and then uh, how to do how to do other practices. Yeah, I think it's exciting times uh, for for theaters now in in Indonesia. But I think it would be maybe it's it's about planting seed like now. Uh, I don't know, maybe they back to, to deeper. I mean, because I'm kind of like outside, uh, yeah, not really insider. Also now in Rojas, uh, you know, we look at uh, of a specific, specific history of theater in Negros Island. Uh, because, yeah, uh, in- uh, Tell us a bit, I, what is history on that Oh, island? gosh. Uh, I think Negros Island is, uh, it was, uh, they have this, um, there was this uh, time in 1986, so one year after, no, I think in eight, 1985, there's a small town, it's called Escalante in Negros Island, and uh, if you know the Negros Island, I think there, there are two uh, Asian American artists, uh, uh, you know, researching about this, uh, Enzo and Emmy Lim. They were part of our platform as well. I mean, if you're interested, I can give you some link later. And it's, uh, it's, it's Negros Island is known for its um, sugar, as a sugar land, it's a sugar plantation. And which is, which is, uh, has a lot of baggages from the colonial era, because it's a, it's a, you know, it's the landlord and the, the landlord and the peasant relationship that is always been tense, and it's um, so in eighty five there was this uh, massacre of a peasant uh, farmers in Escalante, and I think at, at the time twenty people instantly. Dead, but then again, more victims, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, how do you say, more victims uh, in, the, in the coming uh, days. And it was only one year before Marcos uh, fell from, uh, from the power. And uh, this, 
starting from 1986, I mean, they have this grassroots uh, theater of theater of uh, the grassroots uh, farmers uh, workers theater. It's called theater obrero, which means like workers theater, and they they do this. They've been doing this reenactment of this uh, particular uh, incident, tra tragedy, every year, uh, every every year until 2016, 2007, even 2018. But last year it was uh, then, uh, you know, the politics, the the present politics. I don't know if you followed, uh, you know, Philippines uh, politics. Uh, they they try to. Uh, they try to intervene in this uh, this tradition. So it's uh, yeah, it's it's uh, uh, so it's this kind of like theater as movement as political movement is really rooted there. And but also then we reflect uh, on uh, on a bigger uh, how do you say it a bigger movement uh, from the Philippines, PETA which dated back in 80s, uh, then it's, um, yeah, actually it, they, they have a big influence in, in, in the region, in Singapore and in, uh, in Indonesia, and perhaps also in, in, in Thailand, clearly. So during the last platform, we asked artists to do some research about it and then to present uh, these findings. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it was quite a special moment. Do you feel it is a moment uh, in the Asian region, instead of looking to Europe to say we want to be in France or in Berlin or in Rome or to go to New York, do you feel it's a region in the moment is, uh, is connecting to itself, it's uh, discovering itself and is uh, um, experimenting uh, with forms without necessarily looking to the outside world, but to more towards uh, towards its own tradition and new uh, uh, forms of uh, of um, experimentation. I think uh, I think because I think uh, I think the legacy, the connection, the Euro-American uh, influence is there always, and the connection I think in the in the eighties, at least in Southeast Asia. Uh, the connection already started, like you know, or even much much earlier, like maybe in the seventies. But then again, I think what what's so different is the distribution, the distribution of the work, like because uh, I think starting maybe I think in two thousand two, for example, Singapore opened this Esplanade, like big art center, like you know, in following the likes of Lincoln Center. I mean, and then really the intention is to be the center of, of Southeast Asia, which I, I think I would argue that Indonesia already did it in 68 with the same vision, but it's, it was a different time. And also uh, uh, the Philippines also did one year, even one year before, like, you know, the center of uh, Philippine uh, arts, like they, they built this uh, really beautiful center. But then again, uh, there's a new momentum uh, you know, the, the last uh, four or five years when, when uh, maybe you heard like, you know, in Guangzhou, they, they built this Asian uh, cultural theater, like, uh, you know, really big. And then in Taiwan, they have even like, uh, they built two already and they're still building one, another one. So, it, and then, uh, so all these uh, sprouting new centers across Asia, then they need production. And this also this new, I don't know, awareness, consciousness that, you know, we need to really know, uh, we don't know anything much about, about, you know, about each other. We know more about Bertolt Brecht than uh, Kopa Kun from Singapore, for example. And why is that? So then we kind of like, you know, revisit that, uh, Kind of like changing our practice and maybe our travels and our priorities and uh, maybe also desire to to uh, to yeah to to get uh, to be to get in depth with it, you know across the region instead of like jumping across uh, the water like you know uh, mm -hmm. 
straight away. So yeah, I think uh, that kind of momentum, uh, not so much about, yeah, of course, I mean, along the way, the aesthetic, uh, you know, questions, the aesthetic exploration came along, but it's more, more about, uh, you know, the, uh, recognizing that there are a lot of uh, localities and also uh, the awareness of not uh, looking, not really thinking others in a national terms. So there is no such like Japanese theater, but you know, but more like who are the person and what is what is the history, and is there anyone rewriting the history? Because you know that's more interesting than than yeah than only looking as a as a national block as as mm -hmm. before. I think. So in a way, you look at the region as an archipelago with lots of islands that are connected and not just belonging to one nation, but to one yeah, yeah. cultural or artistic sphere. What yeah, because this mm -hmm. Asianness is the question of Asianness has been there. Like in dance, I felt it like you know uh, in the twenty you know since like early two thousand like two thousand two we start asking about this Asianness and the impossibility of, of, uh, of this turn. Because, you know, once you, you travel to Europe or, you know, outside Asia, you are, first of all, I mean, you are recognized or identified as an Asian artist. And, but for us, what that's supposed to mean, because we don't even want English, even English, uh, the way that uh, the language that we communicate is not our language, you know, like, so it's, it's, uh, yeah, we start realizing uh, the impossibility of using that kind of term. Hmm. Um, yeah. Since you said since the early 2000s, uh, the, the question of the Asianness, what, what did you discover? What did you find out about uh, the work in the region and uh, what its idiosyncrasies? What, what is the... Um... What I can you... only, mm -hmm. I, I mean, um, maybe in general, like, you know, like you enter, you survive the intercultural practices huh? <laughs> in the 90s, because not only, because intercultural practices in the 90s among Asian, you know, like, you know, you have, you watch this kind of word like King Lear by, by Ong Kang Sang and you know, and yeah, or uh, Daniel Young, or you know, all these, uh, you know, artists. And now, and now what, you know, like, because, and then you realize that um, maybe we still adopt the, the old, uh, you know, the, the same methods and the same approach that these Euro-American directors approaching Asia from previous de decades. So then, you know, then the, I think the, the process, the thinking process of, of realizing it, realizing that as a moment, and then, uh, then, then also realizing that it's, it has to be something with travel and encounter. You can't just like imagine, you can't, you can't, you can't imagine, uh, you know, uh, yeah, we know it. But the thing is before 2000, traveling across the region is so expensive. I mean, I remember thinking in early 90s when I was a student and I was working uh, in a production company. At that time, uh, traveling to traveling to, from Jakarta to Hanoi, the flight uh, ticket is the same from Jakarta to Germany. Mm. So, you know, it's impossible for us to, 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 to afford that. So it didn't, uh, the traveling, uh, across a uh, region, inter uh, inside the region, it didn't happen until the budget airline kicked in, which is like early 2000. So that's that's I think that's uh, uh, how how it happened, how it unfolded, and then we we could uh, you know we could uh, start traveling. Mm. Uh, even, I mean, to my shame, I mean I ha I haven't been to. I mean, Southeast Asia, 10, 10 countries plus Timor Leste, and I haven't been in all. I think I, there are three countries that I still need to visit. 
when you curate a the Asian theater, Asian dance, uh, um, site-specific ensemble work, what, what do you look for? What is uh, of interest to, to you in that work, what you see? I think it's, uh, of course, the, how to say it? Um, I've been working with Padmini Chitur, his choreographer from Chennai the last three years. And I think uh, because it's different, it's dif different in every context, of course, like, you know, because, but the thing is, uh, I look for, uh, how to say, it? artistic integrity, of course. I mean, uh, and uh, um, um, a desire to, a, a criticality, I think, a desire, but also a criticality toward one, one's practice and uh, that that is based and informed by a, by a reading uh, a reading of uh, you know because some kind of reading about the 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 scene and the form it, it itself so it's not like making word making word like you know but but okay i have a, i have something to say because you know the scene is like this and i think i i still can say something about this you know, like a map about what's going on uh, in with the form, and then say something about this. But of course, it it is. Um, but of course, I work with a very young uh, emerging choreographers, and you 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 know the approach is a bit different. Uh, it's more about. I don't know. It's more about I don't like facilitating the word facilitating. More, it's more about being, being, uh, uh, being a comfort zone, being comfort zone with them. You know, like as as someone to comfort, someone that they can comfort and talk about their work. And it's it's long. It's a long process uh, because of the education and everything. Yeah. Mm. Do you think this time we are going through now, the time of confinement that also, you know, all Asian countries go through, some of them doing quite remarkably well, actually, compared to the world or perhaps, especially to the US where we are suffering uh, um, under a leadership where we feel it is not uh, giving uh, appropriate responses and actually, uh, you know, willfully neglecting uh, to protect its people. But um, do you think this time of Corona, something will change? Uh, will that, uh, within that network, which you are trying to, to, to create, do you feel something is changing? Is there a different atmosphere? Or are there thoughts uh, coming out, whether they are theoretical, aesthetically, or creatively? Um, is there something you detect that is happening now? Uh, I mean, cha changes are happening now. <laughs> we are in the middle of it. So it's, uh, no, I'm observing now. For example, like Taiwan, Taiwan I think is the best uh, country to handle this in Asia. And they, they, they never close theater. They, I mean, a theater uh, still open until, and you know, but they, they change everything like, you know, like, like uh, only 30% of capacity can be filled and then everybody has to be, so it's a totally different procedure what I heard. But isn't that amazing that, you know, they managed to stay open, like, you know, until, until now. And I don't know, I think the Taipei Festival will kick uh, off very soon and maybe they will also do, you know, like, so it's, uh, it's just like uh, after so much travel, like, I mean, reflecting on my own travel the last five, six years, it's crazy. And now it's stopped and, you know, and <laughs> because, this five, five, this four, five years, we 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 know uh, all these spots. Like you know, okay, every February you you would like to try to go to Yokohama for Tipa, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then now, uh, starting from 20, 2016 or something, uh, you would like to go to be in Taipei every August or something. You so now you have these schedules, and then then we have Australia who start being active again, you know, the last, uh, around the same time. So, you know, with all this um, dynamic and all of a sudden, you know, everything stopped and, um, and it won't be the same. 
because uh, this this places uh, this uh, events like festivals it it was so international because of us coming you know because of us visiting because it's not only because it's all practitioners and professionals and then they would do like artist lab and whatnot like you know so it's a so I don't know now that if uh, I still hope that uh, I mean in my heart of heart I know uh, I, I believe this is it will pass um, and we just to how do you say it uh, some of us are to offer the acting to uh, you know to toward this and that's why is is we we're kind of like we're operating from our fear and our panic what is so, overreacting give us an example what do you mean for example i mean anecdotal i mean uh, my two friends in jakarta is my ex housemates and i think uh, they they live in a flat and then so they 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 once uh, two of them went to this big stadium like biggest uh, stadium in jakarta and then they have a big uh, you know uh, park and there was like nobody and then they cycled they cycled and there's nobody and then the guards like from afar spot them and rush came rushing to them and then like saying oh you have to wear masks and you have to walk like you know certain distance and they, they were like it's only two of us like and then we've been like we've been like neighbors and then we we've been walking already in this close distance anyway for like you know the last 20 minutes or something so that kind of reaction is uh, you know to me it's like instead of like uh yeah returning to your body because i think that's what you have and uh, that's what you can rely on instead of like, you know. I mean, it's so funny in, in Jogja, the, the first weeks, people all rush uh, to, to buy vitamin C, of course, and uh, herbs like ginger and kokurma and uh, <laughs> turmeric in, you know, it's, it's sold out like very quickly because it's also our habit to do so. And yeah, I mean, I kind of like it, but not not if it's coming from panic you know mm. but it's coming from yeah from from calmness like you know from yeah from a place uh, knowing that yeah i know my body i know myself and yeah it's uh, moving slowly <laughs> yeah do you feel something changed in you your view of the field your view of performance, of dance, of choreography, of curating, are you going to do act differently? Do you feel there's something that will be different or do you think are we just wait this time out and then we reconnect to creating this archipelagos, this uh, Asian networks of uh, theater performance and dance? I think uh, this online, uh, you know, this digital format uh, platform Uh, has been has been always there like for like some times now but mm -hmm. we never really think think it as a language i mean some people some artists already use it uh, you know as a language so it's a uh, but um but maybe there's a lot of possibility in that um uh, i think there's a lot of uh, how do you say it, examples about it but um i don't want to cling only into this as the as the new reality i don't in my heart of heart i don't believe it uh, but of course it has a function it has a it has a place it has a place in our conversation and it has a place in performances as well but it's not uh, it's not like you know it's it's not it's not the only one while i feel that people now it's the shifting is too fast like okay I jump into this and then cling into this because this is the future. So this is like that what frustrates me is like that, you know, the new belief that this is the future of uh, performance. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm still, I find myself resisting to that idea because I think it's too soon. It's still too, too soon. soon. As yeah. you said. So that uh, festival that was postponed, you're working on, 
you are not at the moment not thinking to present it a different way you hope uh, it will open uh, spaces will be available and with yeah. you know, modifications of audience numbers more yeah. or less you will be able to continue original plans no because our platform is intimate and small anyway so i imagine it will be easy because mm. uh, we created this platform precisely to respond all the big things that happening in the region because i've been into most of these big things and i think it is you know it is important too uh, but to me it's like it can only serve uh, you know certain purposes like you know like because it tends also to be market oriented and in many contexts certainly in my context i mean you know performing arts there is no market for performing arts in Jakarta. There's there's no that kind of dynamic. Like you know, maybe in the region, only Singapore can say that, and the rest of us are not. It's still still very community community based. And of course, we so uh, the market that we serve is uh, it's it's outside our own context. So it's always this negotiation. And you know, when you go back. Home and then you know it's you know you go back to your practice. So I think uh, this kind of like conversation is missing in this big, uh, you know, big platform. That's why we created this because I think if we really need to know, if we really want to know the the region, you know, what is the issue, what is the context, we can't, you know, we we have to be there, and we have to start small. Uh, we have to and we have to we have to be in intimate and safe space we can't just like you know and maybe only focus on one or two things like you know like like in the philippines for example just one or two issues and that's it you know so it's a uh, yeah it's uh it's a uh, i think i i still think it's possible because mm. it's uh if we keep it like consider uh, yeah keep it as is uh, so per perhaps this model of what you say of the small things of the small spaces could be a model also for you know for um, artists um, um, you know in other countries. So tell us a bit about the platform. What is the ideas? What's the vision? What's the manifesto headlines? You know what do you? <laughs> what is important uh, for for that? What you created already before, but as you say, maybe this will work well in Corona time. What is the vision of it? I think is uh, process is more important than product. Uh, so you know, uh, and then uh, understanding the localities, the local context, uh, in regards to the you know, it's very also it's very also important than you know, than uh, than the bigger one because it started by uh, thinking about oh who who are the uh, Asian artists that you know are known abroad. And in the first edition back in 2018, we came up with two names like Pichet Klangcheng and Patmini Chetu, because both of them, both of them, uh, would you know have been produced by big uh, you know theaters like all over the world. Like uh, you know, Patmini was produced by Shaobuna and Shasha Waltz as early as 2001, for example. And they, so they 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 have a presence, international presence. But somehow we know that uh, this market, this international market, failed to see their body of work. You know, Pichet Clanching only is known by its collaboration with Jerome Bell, mainly. Mm -hmm. But Pichet has produced, has created more, much more than that. You know, and then there, there is a trajectory in what he created and also Padmini. So we kind of like revisited this. I mean, in the first edition, the first uh, edition, uh, because because our smallness, we pick only that solo, and even like we we went to Jogja, and Jogja is vibrant in terms of arts, uh, you know, collectives and da da da. But then again, we we knew that we, when it comes to fan use for performing contemporary performing arts, we don't have it. So these artists are. Uh, have you know have to be patient to work with uh, you know sometimes an impromptu venue to present their work you know so it's a so that's also another uh, experience for the artists 
uh, you know, themselves. Like Patnini said, Heli, this is, this is nice actually, because normally I only come and perform and, you know, engage in panel discussion and go home. But here, you know, she, we created such a program that she could meet other artists as well, visiting artists who, who presented uh, their processes and she, she could meet local artists more and more time. And because, for example, it was, I, I really insist that, you know, uh, there, there were only two small things like per day. So there, there was enough time uh, for, uh, for people to really enjoy everything and not, not rushing. And I think that's this kind of rhythm, you can't find it if you go to Yokohama in February because you, you always have to be on the move, you know, and then it's always in rush. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, but it can only happen in small city. That's why we only go to small city and um, moving away from capitals and moving away from this, uh, yeah, the usual art centers. Mm. So, like Yokohama is small, but because it's already like has one, two big things, we don't go there, you know, no. and so it's, uh, mm. yeah. No, so this is a quite a significant uh, contribution and concept to say we don't go to the big cities. Um, we also finding out also in the US, they don't fully work to support the artists uh, long term or ensemble work uh, because of economic uh, conditions um, yeah. and to say we focus on small works and we also focus on uh, the community, artistic community, but also the community of the place of the location um, where, where you are. Jean-Luc Nancy, the philosopher who was with us from France, he said yeah, why he didn't like uh, sometimes theater, he felt it's like a tourism, you know, you go, you watch, yeah. you go home from the spectators, yeah. where seeing doesn't really produce knowledge. And, yeah. but also from the yeah. performers who come in ding, and then they fly back even the same night um, when the performance is over to go to the next place. Meanwhile, to spend real time, like uh, to get to know a country or a place, you know, that, yeah. <clears throat> that is something. And many uh, people we talk to also in Siegel Talks, you know, whether it is Eugenio Barba uh, in small places, whether it is in Ravenna, the uh, uh, company of, uh, from, um, from, from, from Italy of uh, Marco Martinelli, whether it's uh, um, uh, work done by Stacy Klein or others who say, yeah, in small communities, it does work. We are located yeah. there, we are respected, we can create conditions, uh, yeah. we do not have to serve the marketplace and they have yeah. a long uh, life. So this is perhaps yeah. a model and also, you know, in small, groups that works like uh, Peter Schumann and the Brett and Babbitt, like models that have been there. And perhaps with the, uh, the coronavirus, what you uh, um, dreamed up even before, you know, might be a way to, to, to think also to diversify and democratize uh, and the arts and, yeah. To, yeah. To, um, and to do it. So how are the audiences? Do the audience in Georgia, do they come and see it? Uh, do they, uh, uh, connect to the work or do you have to build up and slowly educate how do you Jogja is easy Jogja is easy because i think the arts uh, the arts community is kind of like big in yeah. comparison to the city size and there's a lot of like this is like university city so there's a lot of students uh, but the thing is uh, i think visual art also performing arts a community is is big here and vibrant, but then again, visual arts are more, uh, in terms of events and practices are more pronounced. Like, you know, there's a lot of residencies and you have Biennial and you have Art Jog, which is like a kind of like art fair. And, but could it, yeah, with a difference. Uh, that's, that's how I would describe. So, but when it comes to performing arts, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not on part to that. So it's easy, and it's easy for Jogja when it comes to audience. But in Rojas, for example, uh, we found the audience is students, not even students in college, but you know, high school students. Um, although they, because it's small, I mean, but that's also refreshing for us because you know they 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 learn about the 
theater, their own theater uh, history. Because of course they were like encountered, uh, the, you know, they, they encountered, uh, they have their own experience, but to have a de deeper context for them is something. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's different. And Naha would be, we are very curious. I mean, I've been only there once for research and uh, Akane, uh, my co-curator, before we decided on Naha, she knew nothing about Naha. She was like, oh my goodness, I didn't know anything. I don't know anything about this. And then so the last uh, year, I mean, she started, uh, you know, visiting Naha much more often. And then uh, we just, we, we are just discovering Naha. So it's, uh, yeah, I just, I still don't want to give it, to give it up. And then, you know, because yeah. nothing, nothing can replace, you know, like, I think an, another colleague, uh, uh, trying to do that is another platform. It's called Karakoa, I think. It's also Japanese and Southeast Asia because that's also the thing. The last uh, four six years, Southeast Asia became the became the I don't know destination for um, for arts in Taiwan and arts in uh, Korea. Japan has been always here, like through the Japan Foundation. So we yeah. They, they, you know, their presence is here, but you know, it's because of the Olympic they set up that in 2014 special funding uh, to connect Japan and Southeast Asia. So this is like uh, all of a sudden the last six years we were like, oh my goodness, we were in the, you know, uh, uh, in the at the center of conversation. What what does it mean for us? You know, uh, mm. that kind of moment. Mm. So yeah. Yeah, no, so this is really important for us to know that uh, something serious is happening that perhaps instead to the normal way that these kind of tourism comes and a group of Indonesia comes and plays <laughs> at La Mama or on a uh, Lincoln yeah. Center Festival that's no longer existing anyway, but uh, but just maybe to say go there and also spend time in some of the towns and regions where you present the work for, create the work for, and to also get to know a country and the context of, um, yeah. um, um, of the work and your idea of the small or humble, however one would say, festivals it, uh, with small productions and small cities, I guess also most probably outside and some of the site-specific work, what you create outside the traditional theater spaces. Um, so this is a model that can be adapted perhaps also, you know, in an American landscape where it is also, uh, as you would say, like the Jakarta's, you know, of the, of the world. It is so much is in the big cities, so much in New York, even so Seattle, Portland, Los Angeles, uh, Austin, you know, are, are come up. But still, it's a very big country and there are so many places to be discovered, so many places yeah. that uh, have their own histories. We, not everybody takes a, a notice of and also a performance history, a, a theater history and dance and music. And uh, there's a lot to, to discover it. And perhaps it is a model that in the times of Corona, certainly, but <laughs> so after the TAC, as we say, the time after Corona, um, and that will get a second look to also produce art, to live a life for an artist that is connected with the community, but it's also uh, meaningful. So uh, what you do, uh, there what you are pioneering and what you are trying to connect is of importance and it's good for us to um to hear about and i hope i will be able soon to come and see uh, some of the work yeah. you create and prepare for a year in a small place uh, with local artists with artists from other from significant artists but in communities so i think it is really a model of a of a of a new form for theaters in the form of producing and creating uh, and uh, and connecting and to give meaning to our lives and to also root the people in their communities. So this is uh, important. We are close to the end of our talk. And again, I also would like you mentioned Jonette uh, Jonette Soyad Moko <laughs> Narwati uh, for, for for connecting us uh, and to saying you know it is important we hear the voices you know from from your region especially so also. Far away. Indonesia and you know also that great traditional arts you have we all should of course know more about so um, um, thank you what is the uh, advice you would give to curators or choreographers artists or young artists how how should they use that time uh, we are all in at the moment 
it's because I just finished, uh, uh, you know, uh, taking part of a course by online course by Patmini. Uh, she did this uh, course eight uh, eight session, reflecting on uh, her own artistic practice, and it was really nice. And some young artists asked the same question, and I think she gave a golden answer because she said that, yeah, take time. You, this is like this is the moment to take time. You know, to 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 slow down and to really think, uh, you know, what what you're gonna do and where you where you're going, and then to revisit your practice again, to read again, and then you know, to things that you you tend to uh, push push aside, you know, in in the normal busy days, like you know. But here is uh, the moment to do that, and uh, yeah, a second a second. Uh, uh, yeah, her, her advice, I think is uh, don't rush. And I don't know, maybe it's easy for me to say this because, because I'm on the margin anyway, you know, uh, in Indonesia, we don't have such uh, infrastructure. So we know that, you know, when you are committed to do what you do in the arts and in some ways it's uncharted territory. And, but then again, uh, for example, you can also can be very easily seduced, for example, in visual arts, although we don't have this infrastructure, but then again, uh, in, you know, uh, the market is there in, in, in forms of uh, collectors. We have a lot, uh, we have quite amount of Indonesian collectors. And uh, then you can easily distract it, you know, uh, going going all the way there and not really thinking critically about your your own practice so i think this is the time <laughs> the time yeah to, 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 think, to slow down um to yeah look, and then to, to, to the indonesian way as you say and to learn from your from your uh, cultural uh, artistic experience from your region and to really also take that as serious as a way of living. Theater yeah. is also a way of life. Theater artists shows theater also as a way of life. And uh, in the America, it's a big provocation. One of the biggest provocations is to say, I am an artist. This is uh, already uh, a provocation. You say, why, what, why, what does that mean? And all that, so, so doing that, what is of significance, but also then to say, yes, we actually do slow time. We take time, we connect to our communities, we listen and we engage and create something new. So this is important. Um, tomorrow we will continue our, our journey um, around the globe. We have Dima Mata from Lebanon to hear from Beirut, which is a, at the moment a very, very complicated, yes, important, but also complicated place where things in the yeah. last months seem really to collapse. It seemed there was some way to make things work after this devastating civil wars and- uh, Yeah. Uh, uh, all the you know the killings and of politicians and uh, and uh, fighting uh, of, uh, of, of fractions and uh, and uh, uh, religious groups. Uh, so it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a complicated time. And to hear what how do you make theater their performances and uh, except like the Philippines, the Philippines is also very very complicated at the moment. Yeah. In front of we have a Richard Schachner with us as a closure of that uh, four months uh, experience what we have here and we also will take some time to think what to do how to uh, process all that what we heard um, so we will take um, um, a small break so it was really important to hear from you it was good to see you again thank, thank you. you so much thank you for having me and I hope it was as inspiring for you and as it was for us and uh, it is important uh, you know to uh, be connected, and this is something we can do. The world got so small. We have spent so much in our time in our apartments and we look through windows, but on the other hand, we can also connect globally with a link of a mail, with one click. We are with you and hear, hear your thoughts. So uh, all the best for you, and I, we trust and hope that the festival might work out the way it's organized. It might have better chances than the Avignon Festival because uh, this is much more complicated. Um, for them. So thank you all. Thanks for HowlRound again for hosting us. Uh, Vijay, Thea, 
and uh, to the Siegel team, Andy and Sun Yang, and I hope you will be able to join us for the last two days. And I think we will be back in September, October, we'll see. So thank you so much, and uh, we'll listen uh, to you again. Uh, soon, I send Heli and uh, to our audience, stay safe, do wear a mask. It really, really does make a difference. And listen to what uh, Heli said and see how could that be meaningful in your own life to connect to the people around you and uh, how to create a community to how to take steps and really also how to listen. All my best and uh, 